started. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Lead with Giants TV. My name is Tal Schnell. My guest this afternoon is Linda Fisher Thornton, the author of The Seven Lenses, Learning the Principles and Practices of Ethical Leadership. In case you're wondering where to get that, I'm sure she's got it on Amazon and every uh, bookstore or Barnes & Noble. I'm sure you got it there as well. But welcome to our show. How are you today? Doing well, thanks. We've had a lot of snow here in Virginia, so it's been an interesting week. Great, great. I'm so glad you were able to join us. I know there was kind of a question on that, if we could actually have you on the show. So I'm really excited, and our audience will be just thrilled to know that we've got someone who's going to talk to us about ethical leadership, very very much a topic of leadership nowadays. So I'm glad to have you. Uh, also Thank with you. us, yes, absolutely. Also with us is Sherry Esner, all the way from chilly, cool Canada. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, actually, we are not being hit as hard as the poor people in New England. So, um, but down east, it's 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 quite bad. So, but we do have more snow than I care for. How's that? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I just want to say officially, you guys are more than welcome to come to Texas and visit us. Uh, Gonna take you up on that. Yeah, please do enjoy. We really didn't have much of a winter, but <laughs> enough of the uh, small talk. Let's start get started here with uh, the seven lenses. And uh, Linda, def define for us. Uh, you've been researching the topic of ethics for a long time, and you do a lot of work into it. Um, tell us, what does that mean, ethical leadership? How do you define it? Well, the traditional definition has been just do the right thing mm -hmm. uh, or use the highest integrity in everything that we do. But those definitions are, are very oversimplified. They're not particularly helpful with the complexity of our work lives right now and the kinds of things that we have to deal with. So I want to say a couple of things about what ethical leadership means. First of all, it has to be positive. It has to be based on positive values. Uh, ethics gets a bad reputation because all we t seem to hear are the stories of ethical failures. And then people start to associate ethics with those negative stories. But ethics is about positive values. Things like respect and care and sustainability. It's not about those failures that we hear so much about. So it has to be based on positive values. A good way of thinking about that is you don't uh, learn to drive a car by studying accidents. You learn car driving safety. So we aren't going to be able to teach people about ethics by talking about failures and mistakes. We're going to need to give them the positive values that we want them to use and help them learn how to use them. And another piece about um, it being positive is that compliance with laws and regulations is what some people think of as, as positive, but that is such a low standard because um, the laws are actually the minimum standard in society. If you go below those standards, you'll be punished. So I actually call laws the punishment threshold. So these are not the standards to which we should aspire. The laws are, are really the bottom level. And so we need to aim at a much, much higher level in order to be um, doing ethical leadership. The other thing about ethical leadership that's so important is that it's multidimensional. It is so far beyond just do the right thing. Um, and some of the dimensions that we'll be talking about, it's personal. It's the big and small decisions that we struggle with every day about ethics. It's uh, wrestling with our tough choices. It's interpersonal. It's how, how I treat other people and how the way I treat them has an impact on them, either positive or negative. It's also contextual. Um, do we have a positive intent and impact with what we're doing? Are, are we going into a leadership decision with uh, those things in mind? We have to be aware of what's happening around us. It's also societal. You know, what impact are we having on society at large, are we making it better or are we uh, making life more difficult for people and having a negative effect? And it's also environmental, of course, in terms of sustainability and honoring life and the planet. So we have many different, and those aren't even all the dimensions, but that's a good sampling of the kinds of dimensions that make up what I think of as 
ethical leadership. So it's more like looking through a kaleidoscope than through a microscope. If you look through a microscope, you might see character, for example, or you might see the law, you might see a little piece of it. But you really need to look uh, at a much broader view through a kaleidoscope to see the full picture of what ethical leadership <laughs> means. And I think you're right because most of the time what we hear about ethical leadership is really what's in the news, what's out there with leaders, business leaders, and um, you know political leaders. We always see the bad examples. We <laughs> see what not to do. So I think you're right about that. And there's a, it kind of made me really think about what you said, that if we can look at it from a different perspective of there are some really – positive things that come along with ethical leadership which is obviously laid out in your book as well but um, you know the the hype and the media always you know gives us the uh, the negative view of ethical leadership mm -hmm. rather than showing actually the good examples of what someone may have done in their organizations or even political leaders that have done something right uh, it may not be a news catch yeah. because of that but uh, Let's uh, let's look at each one of those lenses that you describe in the book. Kind of walk us briefly through those, so the audience mm -hmm. can get a kind of a feel for what your area of uh, you know the work that you've done with ethical leadership. Certainly. So we're balancing multiple values, and we are needing to honor multiple constituents. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first lens is profit. And you can't really get away from talking about profitability when you're talking about responsible leadership. It's something that many people believe is part of ethical responsibility because in order to, to stay in business, unless it's a nonprofit setup, uh, business will need to make a profit. But the problem with uh, just stopping there in terms of making ethical decisions is that money does not have any moral grounding. It's a token of exchange, but it doesn't have a moral underpinning. So we need to uh, think beyond just the profitability. We've seen a lot of people stop there and mm -hmm. just focus on the money. The second lens is law. It's uh, how will we honor the laws and regulations and avoid punishments and penalties. And again, that's a critical part of ethical responsibility. But it aims too low to stop there because if you uh, just aim at the level of compliance with laws, you are um, at the lowest possible level of mm -hmm. ethics um, before being punished. The third lens gets us out of that problem. It's to demonstrate character. And this is the very personal part of ethical leadership where we uh, demonstrate integrity and congruence and uh, ethical awareness, uh, awareness of how we impact others and what's going on in the world and how it needs to inform our decisions. Um, and character is incredibly important, but if we stop there, we are, we are missing the interpersonal aspects of ethical leadership, so we need to go on to lens four, which is people. And this is about how we respect and care for people. This is about places like the great places to work. The great mm -hmm. places to work, for example, um, are placing a high priority on demonstrating care generally for people. And uh, this would include full inclusion and respect for differences and all the things that go into making people have a situation where they can do their very, very best work. Mm -hmm. And then going beyond people to lens five is communities. How are we involving our employees in making lives better in the communities that we serve? How are we having a positive ripple effect on those communities? And then lens six is the planet. How are we um, honoring life and nature and ecosystems and leaving the planet in good shape for uh, our well-being and the well-being of future generations? And then lens seven is the absolute highest level, longest term, and the broadest, and that's the greater good. So basically when you're talking about the greater good, you're wanting to leave the world better for future generations, better than you found it. And this is at a very high level of uh, development as an ethical leader if you're aiming at that level. And I want to say that in the book there's a graphic that shows that these lenses are not all equal. If you can imagine a megaphone and profit is the small circle and then it goes out from there, Profit is very self-focused, is what do we get out of it? And that's very close to self. And then the farther out you go, 
to character and dealing with other people in communities, you begin to think about self and others, and then later self, others, and society. And the more constituents that you include in your ethical leadership choices, the highest level, the higher level of human development that that shows as an ethical leader. So it is really um, a journey of growth, of human growth, um, that and learning that helps us expand generally by being in situations that are new to us and being with people who are not like us and, and broadening our sense of the world and becoming good global citizens over a gradual process. But so this, these seven lenses get us away from is something ethical or not, which is too, too basic a question, to which ones of the seven lenses were honored in the situation. And it's a great way. Um, I teach applied ethics at the University of Richmond. And with my students, we take the news clippings from that week, the ethics stories. There always are some. And we put them through the seven lenses. And it helps us to understand exactly what is going on in the cases. And just to give you an example, if there's a leader who is considered a toxic leader, and you can imagine this person is uh, abrasive, controlling, uh, very negative interpersonally with other people. But that same leader could be a model citizen when it comes to following laws, right? And mm -hmm. they might be great in as a community volunteer. They might be helping clean up the planet. So what it, what this allows us to do is to take what is naturally multidimensional and understand it that way and talk about it that way in terms of which dimensions were honored. Uh, it's 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 a great um, you know all seven lenses are developed nicely in terms of how we're developing as people on the inside and then some of our behaviors could be uh, developed into ethical leadership because we're still growing and learning how to be a good citizen in, in today's world so that that that's a great uh, way to describe it uh, Sherry talk to us about some of your questions. Well, I do want to tell you, Linda, that I for two years I taught um, a class on ethics in a Wonderful. in a master certificate program, and one of the first exercises we did with people was help them identify what their values were, and in many, many, many classes, they had not even sat down and considered what they were. I and, had the same experience with my students that no one has yes. ever asked them, generally speaking, yes. to do that ac activity. That's right. And uh, it really helps open up uh, ideas. So part of actually part of the course was, you know, one night we would have a lecture, but the next week we would have a discussion. And the discussions were really, really great. And what I love about your book is that you talk about um, this is how you grow into being an ethical leader and what's needed for the future. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well, from the growth standpoint, it really helps to know where you are in your development, which I built into the book. There's some questions to help people think through. Uh, where am I now? Where do I want to be? And, um, and then to plot their course, you know, how am I going to begin to incorporate more constituents, more of these lenses into my daily decision making as I go along. And people have to understand that they're not going to be able to go from just honoring profit and law to the greater good all in one swoop. You know, it's going to be a process of getting comfortable with a new way of thinking and incorporating more variables in the decision making. Um, and you were talking about uh, getting ready for the future. There is so, such an interesting change going on in how we perceive ethical leadership. It used to be so much about reaction. You know, if there's a problem, we'll solve it. Uh, we'll deal with it. We'll put out those fires. But now it's much more perceived to be proactive and also to uh, transform the organization. Not just something you have to do, but something that you can do that will bring out the very best in people and in the organization. It'll alter the organization's metrics, which I talked about in Chapter 2, and move things like engagement and profitability, customer attraction and retention. So many different things are, are moved by 
intentional, proactive, consistent ethical leadership. So that's what we would want people to be aiming for at, as they look to the future. The other thing that's huge is moral awareness. The world is changing so quickly. It's very difficult for any of us to stay current on what is going on in our in our field. It's just so so much change is happening in just an instant. So the burden of staying morally aware and reading widely and being connected socially and learning from other people, that is much more a critical piece, I think, now than it was five or ten years ago because we know more about how the world is changing and then expectations increase. You know, we, we know how connected our economy is with the economies of all the other continents. So if we're going to make a decision, we can't just say, well, uh, it's good for us, it's not so good for those people over there. Those people over there are on Twitter talking about what's happening to them. So you know, there's a, a much higher set of stakes for people to, to stay connected and stay aware. And we don't even know what that means. You know, We don't know how fast things are changing and where we might be missing a, a little piece of the information. I used an example in the book of the baker who was making gluten-free bread and hadn't seen the article in the consumer magazine about levels of arsenic in the rice and just bought the cheapest one and didn't know to uh, take care about that and of course then was having customers phoning in saying uh, who's your rice supplier? We've seen this article we don't want toxic bread you know and so that baker who may want to do uh, the, the work responsibly can easily move out of that zone by just not reading, not being aware of what's going on in the world. It, it's true and I, and I just want to point out that how I found out about your book was through social media. I did, not, I did not go into a bookstore and stand there looking at the books going, hmm, this looks interesting. <laughs> I found out about it through social media and uh, since I've read it I have been definitely sharing it. Uh, I, I belong Thank to a, a project management chapter and yours is one of the books that we do uh, raffle off okay, during fantastic. meetings. And actually our <laughs> meeting last month, with the meeting we had last week was about ethics. So um, it's we a are hot very, topic. It is a very hot topic and it, people are now starting to understand that they have to take a look at that um, and really uh, we're becoming more project size and you must take your project full life cycle including right. how you're going to dispose of it, uh, how it's going to affect future generations, all of those things which in the past uh, there are several examples, none of which I want letters about, so I won't name them. Uh, <laughs> but really, uh, the history uh, has taught us that. And we are we are much more critical now of planned obsolescence. Yes. It's harder to shop if you're wanting to be an ethically informed consumer because so many companies uh, have products that are intended to wear out after a certain period of time so that we'll have to buy a new one. And that isn't good business from a sustainability standpoint at all. And people are beginning to not so readily accept that. That's right. And uh, there are becoming some creative solutions to that in terms of, you know, maybe you trade in your smartphone uh, for the new one and they recycle the parts, you know, into something new uh, so that it's a bit more sustainable and it doesn't just lead to filling up landfills, for I example. Totally agree. Totally agree. Linda, okay. you've, we've got, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, you please go ahead. Um, we've got just kind of a couple of probably just a few more minutes, but I wanted to spend some time and get your perspective on, because uh, we, we, we covered a lot and, and we really liked the, um, the insightful idea of thinking about it from a values and having a positive way to look at ethical behavior. And, you know, with business leaders, sometimes they want to see the results that are there with that. So how, how does one go about either measuring it or how do they, you know, if someone walked into your business, how will they see ethical leadership? Talk to us about that. 
it's interesting because in organizations there are certain departments that champion many of these lenses. For example, mm -hmm. it, in terms of profitability, well, there's usually a finance group or law. There's a legal department. Um, for people, it's generally going to be an HR department. Right. But there's not a department for the greater good in every company, mm -hmm. and there's not necessarily a department for character. Right. Although there may be one for sustainability and community involvement. So. Um, when we look at these lenses and we look at how our organizations are set up, we can begin to see if we're not um, making it important, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a position, but if, if we're not making it part of the fiber of the organization, then we're not going to get it in our decision making. The other piece of that is what the CEO does and what senior leaders do will set the tone for the entire organization. So if they make a commitment to attempting to honor all of these lenses, then that's what the rest of the organization will do. And you'll be able to see when you walk into a place, you'll be able to see that kind of commitment to people and to community and environment. You'll be able to see that kind of thinking. Um, but if the CEO or the senior leadership team is not uh, ethically aware, not keeping up with how the world is changing, then it's very going to be very difficult to to champion all of these lenses without that kind of high level support and to see it happening uh, in the organization. So what leaders need to do is help people balance out honoring uh, the high ethical standards that I propose in my book and making the quarterly numbers and mm -hmm. getting the projects completed. How do you do both? Because it's easy for people to say well, I can cheat and make the numbers, or I can do it ethically and we won't make the numbers. How can we do it all by working together creatively as a team? And there's usually a way to do it when people have that kind of open communication and teamwork to make it happen. It sounds like what you're talking about is the, the leader or the business executives um, have to demonstrate through their own leadership, lead by example, is key to demonstrate, maybe it's hard to demonstrate all of these seven lenses through a, a, a specific business as you just mentioned because it could be a departmental, but um, if one wants to really drive it, one wants to really live those values that you share, uh, they'll have to demonstrate that through their own leadership, through their own, so people can trust their leader, right? Right, and trust is a big part of an ethical culture mm -hmm. because you need that high level of trust for people to, to be able to say to a leader I'm in an, an uncomfortable ethical situation and I need your help. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a high level of trust it's not going to seem safe for people to bring forward those challenges that they're dealing with and ask for help in working them through in an ethical way. So that trust is going to be a critical part of making it all work. There are also um, 14 guiding principles in the book that we don't have time to talk about today, but uh, in terms of what it looks like when you implement all these lenses in daily leadership in ways that bring out the best in people. And uh, so those guiding principles are a roadmap for leaders wanting to take this ethical leadership journey. And there's more information about that and resources on my website at leadingincontext.com. Great. That is kind of the last question I want to ask you is that where people can find you or connect with you mm -hmm. um, on those resources. Uh, you know, I I can't uh, speak highly enough of the material and the resources that Linda has just shared with you because it does work hand in hand with uh, you know with what you do every day. So it's not just a specific area. She has a great uh, latitude of different areas into your life, and not just business but relationships as well. So this is a um, Linda. Go ahead and tell people where they can find you. You can find me at leadingincontext.com. My email is linda at leadingincontext.com. And Seven Lenses is available at 800ceoread.com and also at Amazon and in Kindle, iTunes, and Nook versions as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, kind of a short afternoon with the weather being as it is. And uh, thank you. Um, for, for being with us. There's a lot more to discuss. But I think that our, our audience will get a lot from what we talked about.
Thank you so much for having me. Great. Sherry, great. thank you so much for joining us as well. Yes, it was great to meet you, Linda. Fantastic to meet you in person. Yeah. Great. And you guys, please stay warm, okay? Oh, we will. We will. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and click the finish button.